This is a Bulldog Radio Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the most valuable sports podcast. Brandon Worth with you alongside my partner, Joe Nagy, and what is certainly not called March Gladness for a reason. It's March Madness, baby. We're yes, sir. back. We're very much back, and we're having a good time. We unfortunately couldn't get the episode out yesterday. Had a little bit of complications and stuff like that due to us not being able to get into audition at all. So there was that. But yeah, we had a great time. Plus also, spring break and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, shout out to Jordan for at Ferris Ferris State IT Services for helping us out because we had we had some major we had some major problems yesterday, but they got fixed and everything was working out really well. And we're grateful because those people definitely help make our show possible. And also, who makes our show possible? Anchor.fm, great place to start your That's podcast. True. Our favorite true. podcast distributor, and we certainly love their work. You want to start a podcast today? That is the one stop shop to start it up. So, there you go. On to the Fair State Sports Report, we go. And, Joe, both basketball teams gave it a real valiant effort. But just came up short in regional it. rounds. Hate to see it. We played pretty well against uh, Finley uh, for the men's side, at least, on the opening round. Lost our 187-81. to uh, That game was pretty solid. I mean, we played... Uh, you know, really, really well all around. Uh, you know, the guys were able to kind of get the scoring to go around a little bit. I mean, Walt had, excuse me, Walt had, you know, 22, Lee with 22, and then Logan and Jimmy also with 11. So it was good to see Jimmy getting a lot more points near the end. And it was pretty much spread out throughout the whole, throughout the whole starting six, basically. Uh, throughout, but it was just, uh, and then Finley kind of was the same thing. But we were just able to etch them out a little bit. We played really well. And I thought that was kind of going to carry over into the Hillsdale game, especially seeing that, you know, we played, uh, we lost, I think, was it, we lost to Finley earlier in the year? And you know, we come back and win, the, win against them now. And then when we go into Hillsdale and, you know, lose by that much, it just really sucks that we had that bad game right then. Yeah, and I think the biggest story with this team has just been the the slump coming at the wrong time. That's really, I feel like, what it is. I mm-hmm. mean, this is a much better team than we've seen. And, I mean, they played great against Finley. It was definitely a nail-biter. Uh, I think if there was one thing that you could say, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm sure there's all, there's all sorts of elements to uh, how different games are different from one another. But, I mean, just looking at the box score for those that weren't able to watch the game, uh, I know I can attest to this, that just it was hard going from going – Really starting out hot from three um, later on in the second half and being able to make that surge and just not having any of those shots falling at Hillsdale. I mean, we were four of 24 from three. That's a rough mark, but they kept fighting. They kept scrapping. And I mean, really the whole the way until about halfway through the second half. And then Hillsdale got a big run going and we just we just couldn't recover from that. But I mean, it was unfortunate. We ended up losing in the semi rounds to a good Hillsdale team. Uh, and that's not going to define this team. It, it shouldn't define this team. This men's team was amazing to watch. And I hope that all the seniors and all the players are listening because it it didn't end like we wanted to. I know it didn't end for them like they wanted to, not even close. But it was still a fantastic season. It was still a ring season. I mean, conference champs, you're still going to be fitted for that Johnson's ring, you know. So it's still a successful year. Obviously not as successful as we would have liked. But this team, with the fans back for the first year, brought back Bulldog Electric. basketball to the fullest. Electric. It was awesome. I mean, especially with a 22-9 and record. Like, it's weird to say that, like that was just kind of like a – off it seemed like an off year kind of even though we were able to get a 20 plus win season because like we really gave away like probably four games and we're looking at a 25 plus win season which you know is crazy to see how much we've been able to you know improve and change over these past few years with Bronco as the head coach and just able to just get that much better but you know it was just that late season kind of slump that we had that we were we're doing really solid 13 and 0 and then we just went on a four out of five or four out of six game losing streak and then that's just kind of what really kind of I think slowed us down for this tournament we were able to turn around a little bit especially with Finley or especially getting the win against Finley but I think you know when you just had those late season slumps it's kind of tough and you know a lot of those teams that had those slumps in the middle of the year what you know are suited better for but regardless I mean 
you look at it, we had a lot of good things to look forward to. We got some solid players coming back. I mean, we're going to have a tough time replacing Walt. We're going to have a tough time replacing Logan and Dorian and Lee. But, you know, we got guys on the bench who are really stepping up this year who are showing a lot of promise. And, I mean, we got guys, too, that are redshirting this year that are going to be a force in the paint. I mean, you have, what's the seven, two seven-foot brothers that we got, basically? That no, are, the Clarabout brothers. Yeah, the Clarabout yeah. brothers who are going to be menaces when they are able to get on the floor. I mean, you got... You know, Jimmy, I think, is really going to blossom into a really a much better passer. I mean, that was his thing anyways, but I think he's really going to be able to work on that, you know, uh, court vision and kind of open that up a little bit. And especially with next year opening up, maybe we'll see Ben get into the starting or starting five, you know, not be that six man anymore. And Reese Hazleton was able to take over every once in a while. So very excited for next year to happen. It's going to be a while, but I think with all this offseason work on, we have a lot, a lot to improve. And that's one thing I'm really excited for. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, losing those guys, I mean, thank you to them. I mean, they made this year special. Those, those four groups of seniors, I mean, while Logan and Dorian have obviously been together a while, and then Lee coming on the train and being a huge piece as well. Those guys brought a lot to the table, but there's a lot of good things to look forward to. I mean, you, the guys you just mentioned, I, I truly believe as well, Jimmy has really evolved into a much more uh, dynamic threat scoring as you, uh, you saw later in the season, and that could be huge for us going forward. And don't forget, we still have Dang. That's going to be coming back next mm-hmm. year. And he was a starter last year, so he could be a viable asset to this team. And obviously, we got a lot of good freshmen coming in. We got a couple transfers coming in as well. So, a lot to look forward to with this team. And I mean, really, it, everything's trending upward. I mean, obviously, it's a sour note, and but we'll get ready for next year. But still going to be a good season. But thank you to those that really made this program special. And we can't look, we look forward to seeing them and wink next year. But mm-hmm. also with the women's side coming up short <clears throat> and I really do believe I heard a lot of things over uh, the broadcast over on social media during this game. Everybody was rooting for us to beat Ashland at their place in the quarters just for how well we played. Being able to beat Saginaw, Wayne, Grand Valley to take the GLIAC tournament and then almost pulling off a major 8-1 upset against Ashland coming down to the final seconds. And I mean... I, I mean, you can try to rewrite the final 10 seconds. I mean, we were up. They hit a big three. And I mean, that's that was the biggest shot of I mean, that, that was just that was the biggest shot of the tournament, really. And I, unfortunately, Ashland didn't end up winning. It was our friends, Grand Valley. They ended up winning the, the whole tournament. But hate to see it. I mean, that I mean, that was just a, a huge. Wait, they, wait, they won national championship. Well, they won the regional. Ah, yeah. So that would be redrawn and they'll play this week. But yeah, I mean, it was just a, I mean, we were up. We had it. Heidemann made a huge shot to take the lead. Six seconds left. Not a lot to, you can do there. That's the biggest shot of her career. But we fought them the entire game. I remember listening on to the radio. And, I mean, they, we were we were really getting after it. I mean, we were making runs in the third and the third and fourth quarters. We were up, I believe we were up by, I think, four at one point in the fourth quarter. And everybody was kind of like, whoa. The Ashland fans started getting a little quiet in there. And for good reason. I mean, we were playing our best basketball right there. But, I mean, anything you could ask for for an eight seed, I mean, this team provided it. And they... They really became a fan favorite for how well they played this year. And I hope that really resonates with this women's team because they put on a fantastic show this year. And they're, I mean, this is a 22 and 10 team. This is, this is a, this is an eight seed team. That's, that's incredible. I mean, this just shows how the quality of teams that we have in division two and that were representing the Windrest regional last week. Yeah, for sure. I mean, look at us in these past couple of games. Like you said, with who we had to face off in the GLIAC tournament, Wayne State and Grand Valley were the, like, the other two top teams in there other than us. And I mean, we were able to beat Grand Valley, who at the time was on a, what, 18-game win streak, you know, number two in the nation, best defensive team in the country. And we put up um, you know almost 60 on them, which is, you know, something that they haven't seen so far yet this season. I think that's one thing to really go into their place and play that well, especially the third time we third time that you've played against them and the other two times you kind of fell short a little bit you know almost by double digits and then to be able to come in and really take control and be able to win that and then you know secure GLIAC championship that was just awesome to see and then you know especially with Ashland what I'm loving to see is just the development that we're going to see even more I mean Mm -hmm. Mallory's going to get better Caden's going to get better better Chloe is just going to get insane down in the post and that's going to be one thing that's really going to basically propel us to even better next year because a lot of these uh, girls who are you know sophomores juniors you know when they get upperclassmen that's going to be ridiculous to see and i think we're going to see a team that's going to run the gliac next year for sure yeah i mean adrian zoe and um samantha 
Thank you so much for what you did to the program. And really, all, our hearts go out to you. You guys really played awesome throughout your years here. And it was fun to watch you play. And I mean, I mean, Adrian was the, the main focus, it seemed like, down the, the stretch. And I mean, because she provided some key buckets and some key moments. But I mean, you're right, Joe. I mean, this this team has a lot to look forward to. And I mean, you're going to lose some some pivotal pieces nonetheless. I mean, with the three we just mentioned, of course. But you have the ability, it seems like, now with Coach Westendorf, that we're seeing these players develop at a rapid rate. And that's something, like right now, we're seeing this backcourt that is looking like they're they're straight up looking like experienced upperclassmen. I mean that they're that's just how well they're playing, especially as of late. I mean, Caden hit some huge buckets. Some Allery hit a big bucket to send us to the championship game, the Gleak tournament. So I, there was there was some key moments that they played, but I mean the senior leadership was nonetheless absolutely phenomenal for us. And just because you don't necessarily see. Um, I mean, really in the stat sheet um, for some of the seniors, I mean, they provided key roles, I mean, throughout the entirety of the season and they had their moments where they stepped up and made this team better. And there's a lot to look forward to with this team as well. I know we just mentioned a lot of that with the men's side, but it really is true. I mean, 220 win programs together at the same time in the tournament at the same time we had to send literally two media teams across the state of ohio to cover both of these games <laughs> and that's a good thing right that's a good thing that's championship culture that we've brought here and just seeing every team embrace that uh especially in this winter season and it, it was really fun to see and i mean this girls team was fun to watch i i regret nothing watching um, some of their key games because i think people missed out on some really good games yeah, for sure. That was one thing too, especially uh, you know, Rob and Sandy came into our class yesterday and we we're kinda of talking about that a little bit. And that's just crazy to see how you know how spread thin we were, but that's something that you love to see, especially since we have, you know, such good athletics here. And that's something that you really don't see at a lot of, you know, universities, especially at the D two level. You know, we're a we're a program of excellence. And that's one thing that you don't really see a lot. You know, we have a, a great basketball program on both sides. We have a great football program. Volleyball is dominant. Soccer is dominant. All these teams and all these players who, you know, have been able to build a culture of winning and build the culture of success here is something that is super great, especially when the new seasons come and the new seasons change, which bring in different sports for us to watch. Like the level of play is always going to be there. Yeah, we might have bad games and we'll have good games, but the level of excellency and the level of, you know, wanting to get better and striving to get better. That's the one thing that as fans we love to see because we're never going to see that go down. As long as you watch Bulldog Athletics, that's going to be there to stay. Yeah, I mean, it's championship culture, right? Rise with us. That's the motto of our athletic program, and I think it certainly represents the dogs well. But really good seasons from both of the basketball teams. Really looking forward to seeing how they do next year because, uh, I mean, they were fun to watch this year. I can't wait to see another another year of development for some of these teams, and they can they're can really shine next year. Looking forward to it. But um, some other teams in action over the spring break session of uh, women's golf and men's golf were in North Carolina, including the women's taking home a couple trophies with them. Nothing, nothing to sleaze at, you know, of course, but uh, really, really good to see early on the success in the spring spring i mean the first really first tournament out really outside for us i mean it's been snowing here in big rapids for it seems forever i mean we literally had snow we had 60 degrees and then it snowed the next day and we were pretty much like snowed in for four days it it, it was whatever so just to see them succeed that much already in the first i mean really the first action over spring break outdoors really good to see and especially bringing home top medalist honors especially with elena eldred um shooting some of her best mark and daniel stasky as well finishing second overall uh and it's funny actually those two went into a playoff to see who would be first and second so the dogs won one and two uh, on the girls side but hey hardware your first first tournament out nothing you could say no about yeah that's for sure that's something you love to see and to go back about how you said it's like snowing and stuff it like got up to super hot it's supposed to get up to 60 tomorrow and like my whole driveway's mud. Yeah. And I wore white shoes today. Oh, so you can kind of no. tell me however that going. It's not as bad as I oh. thought it was gonna be. But dude, it's not it's the at the kicks. point where like it's at the point where like it's getting way too muddy. Yeah. And this is like the worst part about being in Michigan. Yeah, back home, um our driveway is strictly dirt. Same. Yeah. I went back there today um briefly to go get some supplies for my house. And yeah, it was muddy. <laughs> it was not. I had to drive on the grass. It was so bad. So, but you know, rip to anybody out there that has dirt driveways. I feel for you right now, and it's not fun. I almost had to go to the car wash twice today. 
Did I go once? No, but I probably should have went twice. That's basically <laughs> how dirty my car is now. But uh, anyway, golf is what we we're talking about, right? Golf, yeah. Uh, men's side also finished really well. Uh, I believe overall we placed uh, in the top half, which is really good. Uh, I mean, we saw some great performances. Obviously, our boy Tom uh, finished 16th. And Shane Buffet, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, he finished really well. I believe eighth place overall, the top bulldog on the men's side as well, um, and as well as the rest of the lineup. So, uh, really good to see from the men's side. Uh, I mean, a huge field. I think or 13th is the official result there. I just found it on the page. Um, so really good. Top half. Really really a good performance against some top-tier competition early on. And really a lot to look forward to. I mean, especially now looking to be GLIAC champs two years in a row. Yeah, keep the hardware here. But that's the one thing, too, like, especially since you see, like, so much time off. And, you know, when we talk to, like, Thomas and stuff, and when you, like, go to, like, the simulators and all that, like, it's super great to have those here, especially seeing, like, it's a little bit different, but you still are able to get a feel for the club face, and you're still able to get a feel for the ball, which is one thing that makes it just that much easier to do uh, when, you, when you, you know, come off, you know, this off season, going to your first tournament of the year and stuff. Like, that's one thing that, like, I think a lot of people, when you see up north teams, like, go down south or up north uh, schools that, like, have golf teams, more often than not, they're a little bit rusty when they come off. But you know, when you're able to have those simulators and when you're able to have a facility that's you know as quality as ours, there's not a lot of things that you can't really work on in the off season, even if it is snowing outside, even if it is you know in negative degrees outside. That's one thing that you know we've heard from a lot of the golfers. That's one thing we've heard from this program is just like that's why we have so much success is because even though we're up north school that has so much snow when we go down south we're still used to our clubs we're still used to hitting the ball square on the face and that's one thing too that just is like it just makes it that much better for when you have to go down south and especially getting ready for these tournaments that are coming up yeah having the resources to compete against top tier teams is something huge and i think i mean really with the cap coming in i think our our organization, our community has finally realized like, hey, we have legitimate teams in this community and they should be, com they're competing at the top level without some of this stuff. Hey, let's get the stuff that they need. We need all the nutrition stuff. We need the bigger weight rooms so they can, we can get more athletes in throughout a day to train and weight lift and do all the things to make them the most successful as possible. So I think that's really cool to see. And I mean, the golf team's a great example of that. I mean, how are you going to play golf in the snow? Yeah. Right? Let's play in a simulator, right? I will say, though, I haven't played on one of those yet. I really want to, Joe. So maybe one of these days we're going to have to hit up and we should hit some balls in the simulator. Mm -hmm. So I may shoot a triple digit down. number, but hey, it'll still be fun, you know? I'd be down, dude. Yeah. Let's go for it. I know you'll crush me, but hey, I got I got some things to iron out. I got, some, I got a solid drive. I can hit it pretty far. That was a terrible pun that just went on notice, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, I hope the listeners got that one because I thought that one was pretty good. Anyway, good luck to the golf teams. I think they'll be in Saginaw this weekend, and obviously we'll mention that at the end of the report with all the scheduled sports coming up soon. Uh, softball was also in action over spring break, a loaded tournament of events. Uh, lots of games played throughout March 5th through 9th, um, or March 11th, I should say. Almost a full week of games. I mean, I I know we've had our tournament days, Joe, but I mean, that's a, that's a long load to take over a week's worth of time. But I mean, we did really well. I mean, carding up four wins over the weekend against top tier, really top tier Southern teams, and even some regional opponents too, got to play some other teams like Cedarville and Walsh that we have familiarity with. Um, but overall, really good to see. Um, really, I think the, the thing that we're trying to um, turn it iron out, I, that's not going to work this time, but you know, um, <laughs> Working oh, on the okay. consistent. I get it. I oh, get you it. finally I get got it. it. Okay, I, feel good. I get it. I, I almost, it. I almost lost it. But uh, being able to iron out the consistency, I think, yeah. is really key for this team because we're seeing some great performances. I mean, we just really got the short end of the stick in a lot of these games because when we had those offensive breakthroughs with eight runs. The other team got 10, right? That was the yeah. trick, though, especially over the March 10th games, eight, seven, 10, eight losses. Our offense came alive when, uh, and then we had West Virginia Wesleyan where we didn't have it, but our defense played well and it was four to three, right? Yeah. Just, just those little, like getting those things flip flopped is perfect in that scenario. Uh, and there, and really it was just a, a tough thing to see some of those losses come in such a tight matter, especially that we were leading some of those games late, but. It's still March, and it's really hard to prepare indoors. I can tell you that 100% um, throughout my high school days, training in through yeah. January, December indoors, it's really hard to do and translate it to the field. So it's going to take time, and yeah. really, it's going to be a long road ahead until we get to conferences. Well, like the tough thing, too, like you look at it, like 
they have the rubber room. And if you've never been to the rubber room, it is a not very high ceilings and it is a rubber floor. Yeah. So like when you're trying to work on, you know, grounders and bad hops, no chance that you're going to be able to see what you see because it's going to skip. Rubber skips way different than turf and grass. And you're not going to be able to work on fly balls. And I mean, you can work on like cutoffs and you can work on like some angles and stuff like that. But, you know, the rub- the the facility that we have for that is like not super great. And that's the tough not part. Updated, it's, yeah. it's not updated yet. So like it's not the it's not the best thing to see, especially when you know you you want to get out there and it's just, it's just coming to the point now where it's starting to get warmer where they can get on the field again. But it's like it's tough when you're in March and when you're in February and you're playing and then you go down you know south and you make these trips. It's not always the easiest because you're it's your first time really getting some of these actions. And I mean it's like riding a bike. It's not hard to get back into the groove of things, but you know, it might take a half of a game to get back into it, which is sometimes might be the deciding factor, you know, especially I mean, batting is a little bit different because you can still hit and stuff, but just with those defensive abilities is a little bit a little bit harder to get used to. Yeah, and especially I mean, you're taking grounders. I mean, a lot of the times you have to use an actual soft yeah. ball, which well, like the high bounces on rubber, like they don't yeah, bounce the same as like it's that not second the bounce. It's hard. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of things that are, are gonna are gonna translate over the more we get outdoors. So plenty of time for that. And I mean, obviously with all the the spring teams now getting in their early competitions, we're not making championship predictions for them right now because mm-hmm. there's a lot of time to still get out there to develop tone the skills in before we get to tournament and postseason competition. So there is time. And I mean, this, this team's put together some good performances and uh, we're looking forward to seeing how they do upcoming this week. Almost did a Gleniak play and that's where the games mm-hmm. really begin. Double headers that mean double of mm-hmm. exactly uh, what they two more weekends. represent. Two more weekends. We got Finley upcoming and then we got Ashland and then we're heading to Saginaw and then we have like two more weeks of away games and then we're at Hosting Lewis at home, so that'll be fun. Hopefully yeah. we can go to that one, Brandon, get a little bit of sport fix back into it. Hey, who knows? Maybe we'll play some softball, too. We're getting an IM game Whoa. or IM team together. So <laughs> Is this breaking maybe, news? Maybe we have to you know report on that a little bit, too. But mm, Interesting. I mean, we also do have postseason for basketball tonight. Yeah. I haven't swung a bat in three years. Bro, it's just like riding a bike. Is Softball it is <laughs> it's just like soft toss. That's what I feel like it is. Uh, yeah. I I mean, okay. I will admit, in high school, I actually sucked against slow pitching because in the summers when I play travel ball, you see eighty nineties all summer, and then you go into high school and you're seeing maybe seventy five eighty, and that's a hard thing to adjust to. You are. It really is. I mean, I'd have to go up to the front of the box some games. It was rough. So, I guess riding a bicycle. I mean, it's gonna take a couple. Yeah, of never days, had but... that problem. I'm just good. <laughs> yeah, Joe just hits bombs for days. Nah, dude. Legend. I didn't hit a growth spurt to like college, so yeah. I could not hit bombs. I got on base every time, but I could not hit bombs. I'll tell you that much. I got to get your arm better, though, too. So Yeah, true. That's also one thing. I did possibly break my arm on Sunday skiing, so who Ouch. knows about that? Ouchie. That was yeah. tough. It heavily, was... heavily in a sling right now, but... Yeah, tough conditions over spring break. I know I still got out three times. Joe got out a couple times, so... All we've learned is snow is much underrated don't and go, sunshine is overrated. Don't send off a jump after you went back country before you do the run once and then go back and do it again. That's basically what I got to know. Fair. Very fair. <laughs> yeah. That is a, a, a difficult. Was it double black or, or single black? It wasn't even a marked one. We just were like, oh, let's go down here. Trailblazing. Okay. Yeah. We were that just like, this isn't even hit yet. Like we can like how to run through here and go through the trees i was like all right go for it and then we were going down towards the end and then my friend hit it and he was fine because he didn't really hit it as fast as me but i was like i'm just gonna go for it and then i hit it and then i did not realize that it was a pretty steep landing zone and then i just over rotated kind of landed on my arm no elbow may or may not be broken or it's heavily uh hyper extended we'll see Give you a big old Midwest oofta on that one. Yeah, I hate to see it. Hate to see it. Bro. However, on the bright side, though, I think I'm getting my own skis pretty soon. So hey, maybe maybe cool. if I get some skis, it'll be a little bit better. Very, very cool. So Very and, cool. Very cool. Anyway, moving over now into tennis, the final sport in action over spring break. They did very well down in Winter Park at the tennis centers as well as Orlando for a, f- a whole week's worth of action. Uh, the women did very well. They ended up splitting um, a 2-2 overall over the weekend uh, against some tough teams, including one rank St. Leo and uh, Texas Tyler as well, getting wins over Monona State and Mercyhurst were very big. Uh, those are also some really good programs. So uh, 
obviously getting back to outdoor tennis takes some time. Yeah. A lot slower of a game, a lot longer of yeah. fatigue wise. So definitely an yeah, adjustment there. This, especially when you go down the floor, it's like you got the sun on you. Like it's a lot warmer temperatures. You're not really used to it yet. So it's a little bit tougher, you know? Like, yeah. It's not always the easiest thing to get back to. Yeah. It's really tough. It's not like riding a bicycle. It's more like... Seeing that I've never played tennis before, I can't really say anything, but I'm guessing it's probably not like riding a bicycle. Yeah. I have played tennis. I have played in Florida, but I can tell you it was not competitive. It was me and buddies renting rackets and saying, hey, what are we doing? That's Respect. basically what it was. Yeah. One of us might have hit it over all the courts, baseball style. I was going to say, yeah, that's yeah. usually what I do. I just go baseball style and try to <laughs> hit as hard as I can. Yeah. Might have been me. Might have been. Uh, yeah. Just pay for the ball or no? No, I went and found it. It just took like 30 minutes. <laughs> it just took well, a let second. me tell you what. It was a bomb job. Dude, that, that thing, thing went 400 those at least. You ever had golf balls with those? Yes. Dude, those things go crazy. <laughs> those things can soar. So, but. That's over the moon. But men's team also went two and two. Um, big wins over Dallas Baptist and Mercyhurst as well. They also faced off against the tough St. Leo and Texas Tyler programs. Um, so really good performances from them. I mean, really getting outside. Seeing a lot of our players starting to get back into the swing of things outdoors, and a lot of our, and I think the biggest thing was we had some good regional competition, uh, but this the, these Florida teams were a step up from that. And I mean, especially in a different environment, it's spring break. Obviously, you're, you're going to enjoy yourself over the spring break as well, and being able to continue to play is a good thing. But it's an adjustment, right? It's not necessarily the same as being back here in Big Rapids and school schedules and weekend games and stuff like that. It's an adjustment. So uh, a lot of good things you can take from that, and I think it's going to be really fun to see this team continue to strive because they're looking really good i know me and joe got a chance to watch some of those matches and they're they're looking really good um indoors and we hope that translates over and outdoors and we can continue our reign as gleak champs they also put the new banners up they look sweet just that's wanted true. to say that that's true they do look sick they do look very sick but fanny's finishing out the fair stage sports court a couple pro announcements here uh first shout out to brandley merrick ccha all rookie team for hockey congratulations Ooh. to him good honoree for him the hometown hero gets his accolades and we also had some football guys um actually today on the 15th it'll be um yesterday as this episode is released uh they turned it up going to the pro day um to play or to practice in front of um scouts and i heard a lot of them did really well so that's good down in central and saginaw 10 dogs i believe in total um that are getting their shot to play potentially in the pros, which is good to see because our program certainly has a history of providing professional football players and continuing that history and continuing that role of culture is great to see. So really cool for that as well. Uh, Walt Kelser, all Midwest region first team um, for the basketball team. So a crown of applause to Walt as well yeah, for yeah. that great performance. And I know there's a lot more and you can find those on the Ferris State Bulldogs website. Oh, oh, one more, one more, another pro dog. Liam McDougal signing with ECHL oh, yeah. and Cincy. So that he's going to be going to the pros. Nice a round of applause for Liam. It. So kudos to him. Uh, and if you want any more of that information, more, follow Ferris State Athletics on social media or visit the website FerrisStateBulldogs.com. Well, all right, Joe, we're going to take a quick break because it's bracket time after this. We're going to need all Woo! the help we can get. Woo! Stay tuned. Are you looking for part-time or full-time work or a potential internship? Eagle Village could be the place for you. It is a great place to make the impact on the lives of youth and is a mission opportunity very close by to Ferris State University. I've worked there. It's a fantastic place. If you want to learn more, make sure to check out eaglevillage.org. Eagle Village, where potential soars. And we're back from our quick break. Had to fill out some brackets for this next segment coming up. As you know, March Madness is coming up. Conference tournaments have rounded up. A lot of guys are in. A lot of teams are ready to go. Some play-in games needed to be played. I know Indiana's playing tonight, but buckle up because we got a quick little rundown for each of the games coming up. A short little analysis for each one. But we're going to try to make it pretty quick so that way we're not wasting the whole time or the rest of the show that we have on this. So we'll start with the West Region. One versus 16, Gonzaga versus Georgia State. I got Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Yeah, pretty simple. Don't think they're going to lose that one. Eight versus nine, Boise State and Memphis. 
Ooh, I like Boise State. I like their defense. I think Memphis is. I think that I think the flame for. I think the flame flails out. I think that they're gonna start off very short. Same here. Plus Boise, they're the Broncos, and they used to be good at football. So hopefully that kind of <laughs> carries over. Great. UConn pick. versus New Mexico State. The five seed UConn, twelve seed. Our 12 seed New Mexico State. I got New Mexico State in this one. Oh, I like the Huskies. I like the what the way they play. I think this one is a very doable upset, and that's kind of what I'm looking for. Uh, especially since you know, I don't think I'll ever get all 100 right. So I don't think that million dollars is ever going to be mine. Uh, next one: Arkansas versus Vermont. Arkansas the four seed. Vermont the 13 seed. I like Vermont. I like this upset. Arkansas is shaky. I don't like the way that they I play. Put and they give up a lot of points. I put Arkansas, but I very much can see if this one is going to be a very high scoring game. It's got a possibility to be like Loyola uh, back in that opening round where there was the buzzer beat, and that one was a crazy game. Hopefully, we see a lot of that. Yeah, there's a lot of good 12s and 13s in this yeah, tournament. This one's crazy. Sick. There's a lot of good upsets. It seems that like happen. pretty chalk this year. Like everything seems like pretty like set in stone. But there's a couple that really could uh, set some set some uh, brackets on fire. Number six, Alabama, and number 11th to play in Rutgers and Notre Dame. I have Alabama right now, but we'll see who if we can change it before the, after this uh, playing game. I'm split. If Rutgers, if Rutgers wins, makes it, I'm putting Rutgers. I'm putting Rutgers as if well. If Notre Dame makes it, I don't know. Yes, I if Rutgers makes it, I like them because I think Jill Baker is a great shot maker and Alabama. They, and they beat and competed with way better teams than yeah, Alabama. Alabama's going to give up Rutgers, give Rutgers points, and yes. that's a problem because Rutgers is a good defensive team. So now you're talking to track me. Mm-hmm. Rutgers could shut them down on the stretch and hit it at the free throw line. I like Rutgers if they win, but I'm assuming. Notre Dame might win. That might be my prediction. So I'm going to go with Bama as of now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Texas Tech, Montana State. I like the Red Raiders. Good yep. defense. Three seed Texas Tech, 14 seed Montana State. Texas Tech is just, they're the runner Red Raiders. Yeah. New and coach, still the good defense. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal. Yeah, that's one thing that's really going to play up. And I don't think Montana has really seen a defense like that so far this year. So that's going to be the big difference. Michigan State taking on uh, Steph Curry's alma mater, Davidson. I got State here. This one is a tough one. This one could switch back and forth. I'm sorry. I'm going with the Wildcats. There's only Tyson Walker's hurt, a couple guys that are other banged up, and Davidson is one of the best teams shooting-wise in the entire country, not only at home, but on the road in neutral site. That could be scary if they get hot. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say the Wildcats. I'll pri- I'm will i going to be rooting for the Spartans in this one, but I think Foster Lawyer might get his revenge in this mm-hmm. one. In my other bracket, I have Davidson taking that one. And then closing out the West, number two, Duke versus Cal State. What is it? Cal State University Fullerton? Yeah, pretty much. I like Duke. Yeah, Whatever their name I is, think, Duke. <laughs> yeah, Duke doesn't really matter. Coach K's last year. He's going to make sure they go out fighting. Uh, you want to go to the East? Well, let's go to the East. Number one, Baylor versus Norfolk State. Give me the Bears. Come I on, know, man. Dude, this one team. could swing either way. Really? I'm just kidding. It's really? going to be Baylor. I have them winning this all the way. Spoiler alert, by the way. But <laughs> Wait, what? I have Baylor repeat. Oh, bro, we got different picks. I like where this is going. Yeah. Uh, next one, North Carolina versus Marquette, the eight and nine. I got North Carolina. They're yeah. hot. After I don't Tar Heels play, I don't think you can. I don't think you choose anybody but North Carolina for this game. This is literally like North Carolina is one of the hottest teams in the entire tournament, and Marquette's almost one of the coldest teams. Yeah. It looks so North Carolina on paper. Don't be surprised though. March Madness for a reason. Oh yeah, anything could happen. Teams could get hot. St. Mary's versus Wyoming or Indiana University. <sighs> I have St. Mary's right now, but if in if Indiana makes it. It'll be a good game, but I'll still take St. Mary's over them. Yeah, I I really like what Wyoming could do because I they got some really good posts. But St. Mary's defense, dude, is legit. It's and ridiculous. It's elite. I like them a they lot held, more than they some held other teams. Gonzaga down to like, yeah, shut them out. Low, to really shut lowest. them down at home. Yeah, I like I like St. Mary's. I like St. Mary's. <laughs> Me too. Uh, number four, UCLA versus the Akron Zips at thirteen. I got UCLA. UCLA. I don't think that there's any debate on that one. Number six, Texas versus eleven, Virginia Tech. I got Texas, but it's going to be a close one. I really think this is a really big potential upset game. Virginia Tech just ran through the ACC. They're going to be one of the hottest teams. And this is going to be a great upset. And I think that it's too good on paper. So that's why my gut's telling me to go with Texas. I think Chris Beard will get Texas through the next round and at least bring that Texas Tech magic to break that Texas slump. Mm-hmm. Number three, Boilermakers versus the Bulldogs of Yale. I Yale. got Purdue. It's such a smart team, but... I know. I'm not sure going if that's the... going to equate to some basketball <laughs> IQ, but I got Purdue. Boilermakers going to bowl. We'll see what happens. Yeah, size disadvantage. Go Purdue. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Murray State. John Morant's not here anymore to give them a little bit of a kick, so we'll see what they do with that. They're going to be taking on San Francisco. I still got Murray State. Yeah, I mean, I mean, KJ Williams, Tevin Brown, those two are legit best scorers in the country. Give me Murray State. 
For sure. And then closing out the East, Kentucky versus St. Peter's. Kentucky. Cal Perry. Move on. Yep. I don't think anybody's got to really worry about that. Midwest or South? Pick it. We'll go South. Arizona versus some teams that got to play in. I don't really know by this. <laughs> right uh, State Bryant. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to go Arizona. Whoever wins. Still Arizona. Go yep. Wild Arizona Jets. has a very good chance to. I have them going all the way to the national championship game. But then Baylor, I have them beating. Or I have Baylor beating them. So mm-hmm. hopefully Arizona goes pretty far. Uh, next game, Seton Hall versus TCU. 8-9 seed. I like TCU. the Horn Frogs. They like to play upset cards. They've beaten I think so Kansas. Too. They've beaten Texas Tech. They beat Texas. They beat LSU. I like them. They're going to be pretty solid. Where is the South getting held again? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. There's we'll, there's a we'll lot look of different into that. locations. We'll, that, we'll look into that in a second. But number five, Houston versus number 12, UAB. I got Houston. Oh. I think they're looking for some revenge after Michigan kicked them out last year or Ooh. two years ago, three years ago, however long it was. This is going to be interesting because this is Houston's last chance really uh, with their senior crew. I'm going to, I'm going to, might have to go upset in this one. Really? I do. I think Houston. I don't know if that's a good idea, Houston, man. Houston hasn't, hasn't played the best. And I really, I mean, they haven't played well in some of these bigger games. I am slightly scared. So my gut, Ooh. this is all gut one on this one. UAB. I like the Blazers. They are a little small, but they can shoot the rock still. Mm-hmm. I like UAB. Nobody, nobody really knows why we pick upsets in this one, especially uh, since it's March Madness. But anything could happen. We'll mm-hmm. see. Hopefully, it's a good game. This game is probably going to end up like fifty to fifty. Yeah, it's <laughs> going to be. It's going to be just a crazy. crazy, crazy low scoring game. Illinois versus Chattanooga, four and thirteen. I got the Fighting Illini all day. Yeah, unfortunately, yes. I would love to see the Illini go down early, but I think that they're going to move on. Mm-hmm. I think I have them going all the way to the Sweet 16. All right. Actually, so we go. we'll see what goes on with that. Colorado State versus our boys in blue, Michigan. Col- Shh, come on, man. Go blue. You kidding me? It's go our blue time. all the way. 11th seed Michigan, though. So we do have the upset alert on lock. But, you know, Colorado State just doesn't have that same... I think firepower and just that same, you know, conference uh conference depth that the Big Ten does. And I think that's gonna give Michigan the edge for this one. Yeah, David Roddy's really good. And I think that uh, Colorado State's gonna bring a lot of challenges. I mean, they're really they're really efficient and that could be really good for them. But this is this is one of the better Michigan teams as far as being overlooked going into the tournament. We've been definitely yeah. put up on the high think, horse a yeah. lot of times, but this team is getting slept on. So it might be a little I think we scary. definitely got gifted. Uh the eleventh seed, I will say that. Yeah, at least not I agree. A, at least not a play in eleventh seed. I agree. We got but gifted. We're here anyways, and we're gonna upset Colorado State. Yes, so, we are. Next game, Tennessee, the third seed versus Longwood, the fourteenth. We got Tennessee fighting Vols. Let's go. Oh my goodness, Volunteers have played incredible. They have just been the playing lights out basketball. So Guards far, have been playing really weeks. well defensively. They've been stout, sixty two point eight opposing points per game. Give me the Volunteers. Oh for sure, Ohio State versus Sister Jean and the Loyola Chicago Ramblers. In this bracket, I have Ohio State, but the other ones, I have Loyola Chicago. Yeah, I really feel like this is an upset potential game because Ohio State is uh, missing some guys. I mean, Kyle Young's been out this year. Uh, Zed Key's banged up. Mm -hmm. But uh, Chris Holtman's done a a fantastic job of figuring it out. And this Loyola Chicago team team is not the same team with Porter Mosier. So I think that Ohio State moves on. You know what? I think right now... I'm just gonna quick switch to Little Chicago because yeah, I'm go feeling it. a little bit. And plus, right. I don't know if you have tic- I don't think you have TikTok, Brandon. Nope. But there's a sportscaster I follow, Sammy Levitt. If you ever heard of him, he's the voice of the Loyal Ramblers uh, basketball team. And he said there's a lot of good guys to watch out for there. So I like it. Being a follower of him, I think I gotta I gotta root for the Ramblers so I can hear his voice on the radio a couple more times. Closing out the South Villanova versus Delaware, number two and fifteen. No, Could we but- see the faded two? Or fifteen over two upset. We've seen it when Duke lost. Could it? Could this be the one? Aha! No. I don't know. I just got a feeling that this one could be the one. No. If we do see one, <laughs> no. I don't really think so either. But I will not die on that mountain. This is not Oral Roberts. If it's gonna happen, I think it's gonna be this game. So we'll see what goes on. Okay. And then closing out the Midwest, uh, you know, the pride of the cornfields, Kansas, <laughs> number one versus 16th, Texas Southern, or what is it? Texas TCC. I don't know what this is. Uh, Texas A&M Corpus Christi, I believe. Exactly. Uh, give me the Jayhawks, regardless who wins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jayhawks for no me UMBC as well. No UMBC this year. Yeah, no chance. Uh, San Diego State versus Creighton, eight and nine. I got San Diego State right now. Could change. I still got two days to finalize my bracket, so... Sure. I think San Diego State is it's gonna be question of I mean, how they're gonna be able to did, play yeah, offense. Creighton did come off the 
conference win. Yeah, so they're definitely the higher team, but every time I trust Creighton, they lose. So I'm going to go with yeah. San Diego State and then Creighton Creighton's probably win. A, Creighton's a team that I've noticed is just like the regular season powerhouse, like just in their conference, and they play really well regular season. But I have... In my lifetime, I don't think they've made it past the round of 32, have they? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I trusted them last year to go to the Sweet 16, and they failed they on did me not early. make it so at all. So that we'll see work. what goes on with that one. <laughs> the Hawkeyes are going to be taking on the Spiders of Richmond, making it back to the dance after a long uh, hiatus from there. I got Iowa. I don't think Richmond's going to be able to live those big, big hoop dreams, but we'll see what goes on. This one could be a pretty – I mean, Richmond's playing pretty hot. I mean, especially since they won the conference tournament, it's been a while since they've been here. So I think they might be playing it out. And Iowa has not really been showing what they have been able to do over these past couple of years. Like, they're not as good as, obviously, without Luca Garza. I mean, since he's graduated and stuff, he's moved on. It's a little bit different. But I don't know. I feel like this could be upset as well. Yeah, this one I think is going to be interesting because Richmond is n- really not supposed to be here. This should have been Davidson and an auto bid, and then we'd probably see Texas A&M in the tournament, of course. But I think that there's a lot that Richmond will bring to the table. Uh, I think that they're a really good team um, down low, so this is going to be an interesting matchup for Iowa. But, I mean, Keegan Murray, the, that guard play has been fantastic, especially over the Big Ten tournament. I'm going to roll for Iowa just for now. We'll see how long it lasts. Yeah, me too. Uh like I said, two days to finalize the bracket. So if you want to, you can still change it up. Uh, Providence is going to be taking on South Dakota State at the 4-13 and 13 spot. I got Providence. You got Providence? I'm going to – I I don't know. Dude, they've played you got really, a feeling? They've played really bad, but I feel like I already have too many upsets as it is. I, it's I know. Kinda, that's the weird thing about filling up the bracket. She's like, man, I already have like three upsets in the opening round. I don't think we're going to get blessed with that many. Yeah, I'm really – I'm really, I'm really torn right now on what I wanted to do there because Providence played awful in that Big East tournament. I don't know. They're they, they're still a really good team. They're man, that's a tough one. I think this is definitely the most debated uh, upset game because I mean San Diego State has a, is a 30 win 13 seed, so that's very scary. But I really feel like um, the their Providence I think is going to be a team that. Are going to want to slow the tempo down? They're going to want to play. They want to play exactly how they want to. They want to slow yeah. the pace down. Uh, this is going to be a single. I think this one's going to come down to single digits, five, ten point game for sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to roll with the Friars, but don't be surprised if Jack Rabbit's pulled out. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. This one might be on upset alert as well. Iowa State versus LSU. Absolutely, give me the Cyclones. This is a really good 11 seed, and they really have played well. They haven't put it together all. All the way yet, I would say for forty minutes. But I mean, they what they better sh- time to do it than the end of the season? What better time to do it? But now in March, they're if good not defensively, now, then when and they're efficient. So I really like the Cyclones. I'm right there in the same boat with you. Roll Clones. We'll see what goes on there. Wisconsin versus Colgate. We've beaten Colgate in hockey before for Fair State, so we'll see what <laughs> they can do on the hardwood. But I got Wisconsin rolling them. Colgate is one of the best fourteen seeds in. They can uh, shoot. They, they didn't shoot. Incredible shooting team. And the only reason I'm taking Wisconsin is the game I know is at Madison. And Wisconsin is also one of the hottest teams in the Big Ten right now. Yeah. So well, I think they're iffy. I think they're pretty hot. Like I they've, think they're iffy. They've been rolling, I'd say. Like, yeah. They've been playing pretty solid. Yeah, I think they gotta get Johnny Davis healthy. If they do, they'll be in good shape. Yeah. Just gotta keep Colgate away from that three point line and they're gonna be pretty solid. USC versus Miami. USC at the 7, Miami at the 10. Battle of the Coasts. Who's going to win? Yeah, I like USC in this one. I think Miami's an intriguing upset pick, but I think USC is going to dominate inside. Miami's going to have to try to answer from with their guard play behind the arc. Not one of their strengths. So I'm going to take USC. Yeah, I'm taking USC as well. Closing out the opening round of 64. Auburn versus Jacksonville State. I got go. Auburn. Give me the Tigers. Yep. I think, that's, Tigers. I think that's pretty solid. So that's going to round out the round of 64. Uh... I mean, there's a lot of games that I'm really excited for, especially coming up. I mean, Indiana's playing, got that playing game against Wyoming tonight. I'm definitely going to be watching that one. I got Indiana in that. So, But there's just a lot of games that I'm excited for. A lot of hypotheticals, too, if teams can make it together. Like if Kansas has to play Iowa, if they can re- both reach the seat, Sweet 16, that one's going to be a sick game to watch. I mean, Baylor, whoever they have to play to get up to the final four, that's going to be sick to watch. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things going on, especially with this game or with these games that are just going to make me glued to the TV. Yeah, it's going to be, I think it's going to be fun. And I know that 
there's going to be some games that aren't going to go as expected and that we're going to get wrong inevitably. No, we're not going to be the one and nine. What is it? One, one and 9.4 like quatillion. Yes. I don't think anybody here is going to get a perfect bracket, but I think there's definitely going to be some games that aren't expected. And those are the kind of the ones I'm picking. I'm not anticipating UAB winning. I'm just solely picking because it's the one that I don't tr- like I trust is not going to be an upset. And that's probably going to be the one that is. That's just the way March Madness is like as a 12th seed. I would much rather see a team probably like Wyoming or Indiana beat St. Mary's as far as five seed or Richmond over Iowa because Big Ten, of course, you know, yeah, struggles in tournaments. Hopefully we can turn that around, though. But I guess some notable things from each of our brackets. I know I'll start off with a bold take. I got Gonzaga falling in the Sweet 16 to UConn and the reason why I'm going to go all in on the Huskies this year. I really think that they're an off on awesome team. Uh, they don't shoot as well, but I don't think that's something that does like that's going to really alter yourself in March cuz they they can definitely get hot over a couple games and they start off the year red hot. Uh down low, they're going to real I think they're going to wreck Gonzaga down low a little bit. I mean, they're one of the best offensive rebounding teams and they don't foul. That's a recipe for success to get inside against Gonzaga. And if they can, I know Gonzaga is going to really turn this into a track meet, but I mean, being able to contest, not getting foul trouble, give Gonzaga free chances at the stripe. I think that could be a recipe for success. So that's probably my boldest, probably my boldest take on this is UConn over Gonzaga. Because of course, you know, I got to be different. I can't match what Joe Lenardi's doing or Andy Katz. So that's kind of my bold one. It's like, I'm going to throw that one out there just as a possibility and i hope it goes right and then everybody will come back at me and hire me as the bracketologist for a big name network yeah, as the, insert as a here big guy as a big guy yeah uh, i don't i don't really here's like a lot of mine is like chalk you know like i don't really have a lot of like crazy upsets like double digits kind of making it to the next one i think iowa state is like the only one and like loyola chicago but other than that i haven't like going out of the first round yeah i have so, iowa state in or second 16 round. actually Beating Wisconsin. <laughs> bold. Bold. Yeah, I think that I don't think Johnny Davis is healthy yet. So I'm going to go on a limb with that one. But obviously, I'm. I, there's always, that's what I'm trying to do. It's like there's always one double digit seed that makes it to the Sweet 16 or the Elite Eight. And I think the, cl- the best 11 or 10 out of all of them is either going to be Davidson, but I think the Duke Cinderella story might squash that one. I don't trust Michigan yet. Uh, and I, I think maybe Indiana might be the one that I could maybe see getting to play Baylor, but I think Iowa state, I think has the easiest road because LSU is depleted team. They just got a new coach there. They've been on the shambles all over the place. So I think that could be an easy win for them. They might even be the favorite in that game, to be honest. And then Wisconsin is a team that can show up one night and can't show up the other in, especially over this season. And the fact that they're not healthy with Johnny Davis still on the way back, them losing to Michigan state, they're going to be coming in cold. So that could be, that could be a potential they might get tired out from playing colgate in a 90 to 90 game so it could be possible but uh final four joe who do you have in your final four let's see let's see how we match got one one little you can say outlier i got baylor and duke in the uh on the meetings of the west and the east i got baylor winning that one excuse me and then i got arizona and kansas in the other ones so yeah, pretty chalk. Almost all one seeds making it. All right, there you go. I will say I made almost a completely different bracket. There's one that I agree with you, and that's Arizona. And I think that they're going to be in destined for their own success, and they'll be the storyline of the year. Uh, I have Auburn making it strictly because Kansas still gives me nightmares, and I don't trust them still. And so I have them getting actually beat by Iowa in this round. But I think Iowa. I think Iowa might. They might flame out a little bit because they have a tendency to not string together streaks. They they break pretty fast. So even though they're one of the hottest teams, like the hottest team doesn't win every single year. Hence, Illinois last year, right? How many people picked Illinois because they're the best team in basketball going in the tournament? And how many rounds did they make it? Only two. So the the fact Mm -hmm. is that could definitely happen there. So I have Arizona and Auburn on one side. And then I have... This one is going to be interesting to me because I have UConn playing I oh man I got UConn playing Duke actually no we have two then so I have UConn playing Duke and Duke playing Kentucky I think that would be absolutely awesome for this national championship so I think that there we will see three two seeds and then a one seed 
And then we're going, so I'll have Kentucky on the other side. I think Kentucky might take out Duke. I think that that team, offensive rebounding and being able to make more out of possessions, I think is going to be huge. And they have a lot of good playmakers, Kansas does. They're fantastic on both sides, so I think that'll be fun. So I have Duke, Kentucky facing off strictly for the last dance for Coach K. And then I have Arizona playing Kentucky in the Battle of the Wildcats. And I have Arizona to fill the first year head coaching Cinderella story. I want it to happen, so I'll put it in writing and hope it happens here on the show. I respect it. I respect it a lot. I really wanted Baylor to play Arizona, but this Baylor team's not the same. I think UCLA was going to knock them out. (laughs) I know. There's a good chance. Uh, I even think, like, if North Carolina gets hot, that there's a chance. If they play like they did in the title game. I'm probably just going to wait a sec. Because I'm still debating, honestly. Like, it's a very good chance that North Carolina could win uh, against Baylor. Especially if they play like they did against Duke, uh, which was just a crazy game. But, I don't know. That's the one thing I got to think about. I might change it, honestly. I think I might toss North Carolina in there and then put Purdue. Maybe in the in the final four, probably we'll see. Okay, I think the Texas Tech Duke game might determine the champion, honestly, because I would probably like Texas Tech if they played Kentucky. But if Duke plays Kentucky, I feel like Calipari has a trick up his sleeve for Coach K's team, and I don't think they're playing the best right now. Obviously, that could change by the final four, but I think Kentucky's in the driver's seat right now in their bracket for sure. They just got to take out Purdue. The size is concerned, but. I, Purdue doesn't make it every year, and that's where I just don't trust them. That's my thing is consistency really hurts in making mm-hmm. these brackets because I want Purdue to make it. I want Jay Nivey to be the story, but I just don't I don't trust them at the moment. So, And Kentucky has that tournament pedigree, so I like where they're going. Yeah, for sure. I'm right there with you. So uh, anyway, final upsets to watch out of this bracket. Uh, I know we've named a couple of them already. I mean, I think the I think the number one that people are looking for um, definitely as a viewer perspective, I got to say is probably Davidson, Michigan State, which I mean, the committee, yeah, I mean, no regard for filter like they put this together for the storyline and there is no arguing that they didn't because Davidson could easily be a nine on 100 percent. They would probably be maybe an even eight if they would have won the a 10 and not fumbled up to Richmond. So I think that you see Foster Lawyer, but like, I mean, that's going to be a fun game seeing Foster Lawyer being able to play the Spartans. And I mean, I know I have them be pick pulling off the upset. Obviously, this bracket's different than another brackets because you know we all make twenty because we want to try to get the the, the million dollars. So, yeah. but I think that this that game is going to probably be one of the most fun to watch. And even on the other side too, Ohio State Loyola. I mean, that could be a really fun fest too. Yeah, that one's going to be exciting to watch. Yeah, I think they're. I think the the nation's probably number one upset that you will see. And if you are looking for like. What's the most concrete upset on paper? I think that there's two. I think on one, especially in the 611, uh, Virginia Tech, Texas is one of them. Virginia Tech's one of the hottest teams uh, coming out of the ACC. So I think that is going to be one where Texas strictly has just been up and down all year long. Will that change? We don't know. Uh, and I think even you look at across on the other side, I think that there could be a legitimate argument that. I mean, Colgate could beat Wisconsin. It's going to be hard in Madison, but Johnny Davis isn't healthy, and they play like they did against Michigan State. Colgate can, f- they can fill it, man. And I, I mean, obviously we said that about this team last year, but I mean that's got to be a redemption, right? They can't, they can't shoot the ball as poorly as they did last year, and even they pulled a little bit of a comeback. So I think that one could be another one uh, as well. But I know Joe, you like that. You like the Jackrabbits potentially over the Friars in that thirteen four spot as well. That is true. I do have Providence over this one, but I think I put South Dakota on, I think, one of my other brackets as well. Uh, But I think I'll keep Providence here. But that one has just, you know, I just got a gut feeling. You know, it's just a little rumbling in my tummy. Yeah, yeah, of course. But what's a game? uh, This is this is one interesting one. What's a game that you hope does not like? What is the one Cinderella team that you want to get? Potentially into the final four, like a double digit outlier. Obviously, it can't be Michigan because obviously we're going to be rooting yeah. for them. But which team, uh, double digit, could you say make the final four just for kicks and giggles? Just like make it like cool or whatever. Yeah. I mean, just you could just throw a toss in the wind, basically. <laughs> the one that I think could, like, I think New Mexico State is one that jumps out at first. 
But Virginia Tech, too, I think could do it as well. I think so, those two. Okay. Yeah, I think I would love to see Indiana run the table from the first four. And that's been something that we've seen. UCLA literally did it last year. And obviously, us Michigan fans know how that felt. Suck. Hated it. It was terrible. We should have won that game. Can I stop crying? I'm fine. Uh, but that's one I could I would love to see. I'd also love to see uh a team potentially like Colgate be able to get there. I mean, obviously it'd be hard as a 14 seed, but then you look at their potential road. I think the Midwest bracket, uh that or excuse me, that region is the worst region, personally. I really don't like I don't like that region at all because uh I think John uh John Rothstein from uh CBS um he quoted it as the uh the region of vulnerability. I think that literally hits the dart in the bullseye for this Kansas inconsistent in tournaments. You got a team like Auburn who's been up, but now they're fading downward going into this tournament. You got Wisconsin coming off of a loss. They're banged up. Providence just got blown out in a conference championship game. The hottest team's Iowa, and that's a five seed. And there's a lot of people that are going to be picking Iowa to get out of this region, and that's honestly probably a pretty good pick for other playing. But a lot of these teams are inconsistent, so that region is definitely going to be one to watch because that one could yeah. get chaos. We might see a double digit come out of that one just based off of how teams have been playing up to this point because top seeds have been playing awful in this region. It's weird. They put them literally all together, but it just makes it harder for us. That's all. Yeah, true. I know that's the one thing uh, whenever you look at it, just like the way the seeding works is always weird because you think that they do like, you know, the top 25 is kind of set up the way it is, but like, it's always weird to see like how like planned games get true. Playing games get chosen and those lower seeds get chosen as well, especially when you get to like the 13, 14, 15 spots and like 16, like what kind of constitutes that? But it's always interesting. Yeah, it's going to be a fun month of March Madness. I, know, I cannot wait right now. Uh, obviously, we'll be following our brackets to see who wins out of out of the two of us. I mean, I don't know. I like my bracket, but I think Joe's all, Joe also has a great bracket as Thank well. You. So we're going to have a lot of fun. I know we got a lot of friendly wagers going on around campus on the sports communication department on whose bracket's going to win. Uh, let us know who you think will win. I think that we, I hope at least one of us wins out of the whole sports comp pool because there's there's a lot of great minds in that group, and I think oh, yeah, that there's sure. going to be a lot of good brackets. Yeah, it's going to be sick. Yeah, so that's going to be it for March Madness. Obviously, we'll be covering more of that on our next show coming up on Thursday as well after the first uh, four games have been played. But one other news that stole the entire day by storm. And so <laughs> how do we give in March Madness after Selection Sunday and just a, you know, just a... Slight the goat is back. Bomb. Tom Brady's back again, unretired. Bro, what? I knew <laughs> I knew it was gonna happen too. I literally, I think we even talked about this, Brandon, off air. Like, unreal. I knew he was not gonna retire at that point. Like, he was definitely like saying it or whatever. Because I think when, to be honest, I think here's what happened. He saw like there was a report that came out that he was gonna retire, and he was like, you know, I don't. I'm on the fence. Maybe this is a sign for me to retire. And then he did. And then he's like, man, I don't like this. I'm coming back. <laughs> like he spent one month with Giselle and the kids and he realized he had to like go take him to school and stuff. He's like, yo, I'm going back oh to God. training camp. I'll be back in a little bit or something. The trash out. He's Sucks. literally like, that's, I knew he wanted to play for longer than that. Like I knew, like it just didn't seem like the right time. And I think the only way Brady's going to leave is if he's got to go out on a stretcher or if he's winning a Super Bowl. Like that's the only way that I think he's going to head out. Yeah, and I noticed uh, one thing uh, Field Yates tweeted um, that has his year-by-year uh, -year results over, like, since 2010. Every year has been lost, Super Bowl, lost, Super Bowl, lost, Super Bowl. And what did he end up last year with? A Super loss. Bowl. Or wait, a loss. two years ago. Two years ago was a Super Bowl. Last year was a loss. So then this year could be Super Bowl. Based off of that pattern, I think he might have saw that tweet and said, you know... It sounds pretty good to get another one, you know? I'm going to have to come Might back well. one more time. I mean, I'm going to go for eight. Why, why would he not? not? He threw as many touchdowns as he is old. That's just like a ridiculous performance of what his age is at right now. And I think that's the one thing is like a lot of people are like, no, nah, he's done. Tom Brady is a competitor. He's not going to, he's only going to stop playing until somebody forces him not to. Yeah. And it's not going to, 
I think Giselle was trying to force him to stop on this one, <laughs> but he's not stopping until like Belichick or like Goodell just stops him from playing or something like that. Did not succeed. Yeah. Maybe when he like turns like 50 and realize like he can't run anymore without like hurting himself, maybe yeah. he'll retire. But Tom Brady's a competitive guy. I mean, it doesn't matter. And I think like there was a lot of memes put up about obviously why he retires. Like, ah, you can't take out the trash every day. You saw the PTA conferences said, no, sir. Like, it's just harder to not be a professional athlete. And I think that's something that goes overlooked as far as how many how many years you spend in the game. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like he and how hard grew up league. with it. it. He was in college and he's been in the league for 20 years. It's like once you get to that point, it's like you stop and it's like, wow, like. I literally have so much free time. Mm -hmm. And like he can retire any day he really wants to. But I think it's just like, especially when you get to that point, is like, and it happens, in, you know, when you're a high school athlete, when you're a college athlete, when you get to pro, it's like you have a sort, I wouldn't say depression, but also just like you just feel bad or whatever. Or it just feels weird to not be a part of like a sport anymore. Yeah. I, th I think it's, yeah. I, I really like the points you just made. And I feel that. There's going to be a lot of speculation to come on when when necessarily when the right time is to retire, because I think that obviously Andrew Whitworth is the perfect explanation for that. I mean, yeah, when a Super they, Bowl. They, yeah, it's definitely time in, now. Yeah, it's time. And I think Tom just wasn't it was just unsettling, you know, and I think that you're he's so used to winning. I think we'll know. It's hard to know when you have to put it up because you think. I've done it when I'm 40, I'm 40 years old. I can still do it and I can keep going. And I'm really, you're right. I think it's got to take, you know, a, a drastic injury or a final sunset ride like Peyton Manning had to really realize, yep, I think it's satisfied now, which is crazy because when you have seven Super Bowl rings and countless awards and MVPs, it's like, yeah, I'm not ready to retire yet. I haven't earned enough. What? Yeah, yeah, this guy's different. I don't think it. Yeah, it's not like he hasn't earned enough. It's just like I think it'll come to a point where we will all know that it's the right time for him to retire. Yeah, I think it's like one of those things where like it happened with Peyton Manning. Like when he won the Super Bowl, it's like all right, yeah, he's retiring. Like we know, like he was kind of prolonging a little bit. He's he's gonna he's gonna retire. It's the same thing that happened with uh shoot what was his name? Uh, I'm just totally blanking on his name now. I can't remember. But anyways, regardless, it's gonna happen with Tom Brady. We're gonna know it's gonna be the right time. So yeah, and now the debate we can have is was Tom Brady actually going to not retire? And then the media made him. True. That could. is a legitimate thing because look how many times that they pushed it. And I mean, we're, we're having speculations out here. I mean, we had Dylan on the show and being able to go through those conspiracy theories. I mean, when that gets overwhelming, is that almost something that you do just to just to make sure that, you know, like the, the media is still within game? Because I think if they would have got that, I mean, obviously them now him coming back kind of makes you kind of get a punch in the face, you know, because now you're like, oh, yeah, you guys aren't ready for this. Like, you don't control me. Like, this is kind of almost a punch back to them after that whole scenario of Did he, he's retiring. No, he's not. He hasn't signed. He hasn't said anything. No, he told me. And now it's just a whole war fest within the journalism ranks. And now Tom, all we've learned is athletes control the sports world, especially in media. And Tom Brady's on retirement shows that more than ever. For sure. So going to be fun but there's also the i don't know if you saw the video when he went and watched uh, cristiano ronaldo uh and they had that conversation on on the pitch after the game and there was the mouth of uh you finished he's like, said, and then he, he gave shook a questionable a little face bit, like it was like was, was that done. the moment that he said that he decided after sitting in the stands like i can't do this i gotta come back whatever it is the goat is back and he's hungry I guess for more. Don't know how you need much more, but he is. So Tom's going to be back, and he's going to have a loaded field. I mean, Russell Wilson is a Bronco. Deshaun Watson potentially back in the game. A loaded AFC West division. Aaron Rodgers returning in teams. Building up young core like ever to try to duplicate the Bengals. Going to be a fun NFL season. Gonna for be sure. Fun. So going to be great. But thank you guys so much tuning in once again on this special episode. Obviously, we appreciate your support. Don't forget to subscribe uh, on our YouTube channel as well as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to our show. Make sure you interact with the polls on all of our all of our social media and platforms because we love to hear your guys's imp or hear your guys's feedback and make our show the best we can for you. I know Joe likes reading them. I do. 
he does like reading them. I do like reading them. It's true. So give us some. <laughs> so give us some. Anyway, I made this super awkward. I apologize. But anyway, until next time. Take care, everybody. <laughs>